Hello everyone and welcome. Today we're going to be discussing the Snowflake Usage Dashboard version 3, which has been upgraded thanks to uh, Mr. Dalton Rohr, aka the Click Dork. Uh, and we're going to talk about all the new features and ways we can analyze Snowflake usage and spend. Let's go ahead and dive into the Usage Dashboard. So we have now added some new areas and we've, we've streamlined not only the presentation but the look and feel of the content so it's much easier to use and easier to start uh, modifying based on your Snowflake environment. We now have introduced a table of contents. Uh, this contains direct links to get the different analytical uh, pages inside of the application as well as the main overall configurations for credit cost, storage cost, and uh, total credits purchased if you're an enterprise customer that we can track spend against that. Moving on, let's go ahead and take a look at the main page. And we're going to go ahead and make sure that we look at usage build here. And so this gives us the ability to look at various and sundry facets of how we are using our Snowflake system. Uh, this is con connected to uh, two different Snowflake instances, uh, AT and PE. Uh, we have added in the ability to track uh, the consumption by the various and sundry processes, uh, uh, click related and non click related inside of the engine. Uh, uh, and we have several different buttons down here which allow us to change the way we're looking at information. Maybe I want to look at it by uh, application type. Maybe I want to look at it by query type. This just gives us the ability to get a general understanding of how uh, not only is information being, uh, you know, how, how we're using the information, but also what types of processes are generating the most amount of credit usage. And so we can kind of take a look at these by different uh, aspects. And we have different measures we can use to score. Um, and change all this. So this really gives us the ability to do some of that dynamic analytics of the information. I'm going to go ahead and focus in on just uh, certain months here. As I say, the last rolling nine. And now we can see our aggregated cost. Let's go ahead and filter down on one specific Snowflake system. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that. This happens to be our partner engineering system. And now we can see what our spend looks like over the last nine months uh, and specifically broken out by QDI versus QDA versus support tasks uh, versus service side engine. Uh, 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 queries. So again, overall usage. If we get into looking at specifically the enterprise credit, uh, let's say we bought 13,000 credits uh, and we'll turn off all of our time. We can see how our accumulation is doing against that and what our overall spend is. So we can understand if we're getting close to using up all of our purchased credits. Moving on from there, we're going to be able to dive down into more uh, information around auditing and security. Who's logging from the system? Where are they logging in from? Are there any uh, particular are there success versus failures of logins? What types of drivers are they using to log in? What versions of those drivers are being used? So it gives us the ability to sort of understand the connectivity from a user uh, point of view. And so uh, we're also using the Click Geoanalytics engine to map IP addresses to physical addresses, which is a, a nice feature. Moving on to diving down into specific uh, entities around query performance analytics. And with that, we're able to go take a look at uh, when are queries being run, uh, what queries are successful, maximum lap time, maximum total number of queries, queries that have failed, and really get down into what's actually happening with all the details and all the information uh, of queries that have been run inside of Snowflake across the different systems. Um, and so again, it's just a great way to come in and, and analyze this information instead of maybe I want to look at by the type of database that's being used, uh, analyze it by the type of click application, Snowflake instance, etc just gives us a great way to do some of that in-depth analytics. Now, what we've added in this new version is the ability to actually parse connection strings from various systems. In our case, we've gone and mapped all of the click families uh, into the uh, against the connection strings that are coming out of Snowflake, which gives us the ability then to bucketize uh, how information is being consumed or, or what processes are using a majority of the, the credits inside of Snowflake. In our case, we can see that it is primarily QDI, uh, which is replicate and compose. Uh, support tasks. Now, this is interesting. This means not a click product. Uh, so going in and using the user interface directly or using some other SQL tools uh, fall into support tasks. <clears throat> so it's really interesting to understand that breakdown of, of how those uh, how you're using your Snowflake system by connectivity. And then finally getting in to be able to do some metadata browsing. So this gives us the ability to come in, understand the tables, understand whether they're internal or external shared type tables, and understand if I look at AdventureWorks, uh, here's some schemas, here's the tables, here's the columns, and I can go and investigate that. So it's a nice metadata browser to understand all of the data that exists inside of our Snowflake system.
So altogether, this is what we call the Snowflake Usage Dashboard. This is version 3, and it is uh, out there and available on GitHub. Uh, thank you so much for your time, and I hope you find this useful and, and helpful. Thank <music> you.